So now we have all this data from our tensile testing machine. So I'm going to walk through how to actually format it, to set it up to calculate all these things that you need to calculate. Now typically I know I do this actually live in Excel, but I do have these slides set up that walk us through it, so we're just going to use those. So what's going to happen is from the machine, you are going to get a bunch of data. So this is your data. It's been truncated, though, because there's uh, thousands of data points, and this is just the, uh, the top column. But you're going to have force, strain percentage, position, and time. First thing we want to do is remember the coming from the machine. This is a CSV file. Save it as an Excel file so that way we're not losing any of our data. And then you can delete these two columns C and D because position and time do not matter for what we're doing making the stress strain diagram. And then anything in the beginning that has negative values for force or strain, you can delete. And so even if there's some values up here that are negative, positive, goes negative, positive. Just find where the negatives end and delete those all those rows. Because what's going on is there's a little bit of bouncing in the machine before things are all pulled taunt, so it doesn't really matter. And so then after that, we want to go to the end of the data. And so in this case, this example had uh, 2001 data points. And you're going to notice there's going to be this huge drop at the end. So in this case, it went from 19,500 pounds to 1,610. What's going on when that sample breaks? Because there are springs, there's a little bit of bounce in the machine, and it's creating a couple of false data points. These are not data points that you need, so you can delete those rows. And so we're going to go all the way back up to the beginning, and we got to remember we have strain in percentage, we want strain in length over length. The reason that we want this is because our entire graph is based on that force and that unitless parameter of strain. Because in percentage, strain still has a unit associated with it. And so if we leave it in percentage, our, when we calculate our modulus of elasticity, it's going to be in pounds per square inch per percent. And we don't want to do that. So how do we do that? As you can see right up here, we're going to take our strain percentage, we're going to divide it by 100, and that will put it into decimal. Because this is not, this is, you know, 0.003%. So when we divide it by decimal, the units will work out correctly. Now we get a lot of zeros, 308. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, it is a stress strain diagram. So we need to go on to calculating out stress. How do we do that? Force over the area. And so you can see I've given this a range name of area, so that comes up area, take the force, divide it by the area, and then that's going to give me my value. And just remember, don't bury numbers in the cells. You don't calculate the area and put the area as a number here. The area is needs to be referenced back to a cell. If you didn't rename this area, the cell is probably ending up like H1 or something. Never, ever, 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 ever put numbers in the equations when you can put them in a cell. Now, if the equation itself is two times something, that's fine. But I'm just saying, if it's, like in this case, force over area, both that force and that area should be in different cells. And so once we do that, we can drag it down, and you can see we've got all of our stress value there. Also notice that I put my units here at the top. It's very important, so somebody's looking at this knows what's going on. The next thing that we need to do is we need to plot that stress versus, oops, sorry, stress versus strain data to have our stress strain curve. And so once we do that, just using the method that I showed you before, you will see that we'll end up with something like this. So we want to do it with an XY scatter, no markers, because if we have markers, this will look like a big, thick line through here. And one thing that I like to do is right-click on the Y-axis to put commas in. It's going to make things a lot easier to read. And also, don't forget the units and titles.
So stress PSI, strain inch per inch, if you don't have those in there, the graph is kind of worthless because you need to know what's going on. And so what's kind of interesting about this graph is it doesn't look like our normal stress strain curve because it doesn't go through that peaking and then dropping because this is where we take the extensiometer off the experiment, which you can see in one of the experimental videos. And so what's happening is it's going up to ultimate strength and down to breaking strength without recording what the strain is. But we don't need it anymore because we have enough data points to be able to calculate out what the modulus of elasticity is. And so at this point, I'm going to stop this video. The next video, I'm going to show you how to label everything on the graph that we need for this assignment.